Three, two. Oh, I was waiting for the one. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am here with Omar Isaf. Omar, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi. <laughs> Great. This is Omar. He is a fitness YouTuber and also my ex-boyfriend, but mainly a fitness YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking tanking these intros. You're killing it. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I needed the validation. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am here with Omar Isaf. You guys may or may not know him as one, my ex-boyfriend, but two, also a fitness trainer. And he basically documents his journey with weightlifting or powerlifting or whatever it is that he focuses on and also helps people get fit and strong. Hey, uh, <laughs> thanks for having me on the channel. Yeah. Omar here. Uh, I did your programming several years ago. You've had different goals. Um, I think right now over the last little bit, you actually have been focused with your training. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've been well, four to six weeks on track, making your own food, going to the gym, and you're interested once again in getting stronger, regaining some of that strength as a vehicle, both for body composition, so how you look, and then how you feel. You know, yep. people respond to different modalities and you seem to gravitate well towards that objective strength standard. Yeah, I feel like it gives me more of a purpose or something to actually work towards. As he just said, you guys know I kind of fell off the wagon um, for for a good year, if not more than that, and... <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, like, you know what people say, up from there. I fell off the wagon like for two weeks or like a month, you're like I fell off the wagon for a year. That's like saying, oh yeah, you know I'm currently unemployed. I'm like, how long has it been? <laughs> Six years. It's like, uh, I don't think that's unemployment. But now you're back. I finally caught up with the wagon and I am back. But it's going to the wrong destination. It's going to the wrong destination. Yeah. I have no idea where I'm going right now. You know, he has actually been the one that has been helping me with my programming for the last four to six weeks. I personally felt, and he's agreed, that I should wait to start talking to you guys about this and my journey and everything until I at least prove some, some consistency with myself. Yeah. So now it has been, I'd say it's actually been over a month that I've been doing this, and I just thought it would be really cool to have him on, talk about my programming, talk about my goals, and then he can answer any of my questions and kind of inform you guys on what the plan is for me right now. Let's break down what you're doing and what the goals are. I think, like I said, your overarching goal is to regain some of that strength you had. Yep. Your all-time best squat, I think, was 226 pounds. Yes. Which is very good for your body weight. I think it was um, one... 15 at the time. Yeah, and then you did a fat loss phase where you got to like 108 pounds. Yeah. You got quite lean, and in fact, for women, I think I, it was the leanest I've ever been. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend you to get much leaner than that mm -hmm. because one, hormonal issues, two, our relationship with food, but you've accomplished several different goals. I think it's time again for you to have that framework in your life for training. Yeah. And so strength training provides that objective standard, and I think that's why a lot of people gravitate towards it. I think for you, gravitating once again towards strength and having that framework of, yeah, I'm gonna go into the gym, I'm gonna try and get stronger. Here are the lifts I'm trying to improve. Here's how I wanna look, where everyone has a different goal when it comes to their physique. For you, your goal is more traditional, and that's not a bad thing at all, where you wanna accentuate kind of the legs, so you wanna build the glutes, the I feel like I, I wanna build everything too. Yes. I mean, like, as we You are more of a bro in a way, where you're like, I want my upper, I have no upper body muscle, <laughs> I remember you saying that. Where are my delts? Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question, and Shoot. I know it's a cliche one, but because I went through it and as I'm documenting my journey again, more people are like coming out of the woodwork saying that they were going through the same thing. When you do fall off for that long, right? And it's not just a, a month, year. two months, a whole, yeah. a whole year, maybe yeah. even maybe even longer. <laughs> yeah. What would you say to advise somebody and kind of give them the ego boost? Cause you sure. remember having that strength, you remember mm -hmm. that body composition and then it's just gone. You basically yeah. feel like you're starting from scratch. Yeah. So what are some things that you would say to somebody as they're getting back into it to kind of, I guess, keep them in it. I think uh, for some people it could be daunting. It could feel like climbing a mountain where they accomplished something before. It's like, wow, the path from where I was to where I wanna be once again mm -hmm. is so far. But uh, in a way, muscle does have memory. Uh, your strength does as well, where it took you, let's say, eight to 10 months of consistent training to squat 226 pounds. Yeah. If you are consistent once again, it won't take that long. Really? And so, yeah, I'll shorten the path. Uh, I think for you right now, if you train consistently, within about five to six months, it depends on your motivation levels and a lot of other things. Do you want to squat that weight again? Who knows? I think just getting stronger overall no, is good. Like, or happens. go beyond that. For a lot of individuals out there, I think, 
they look at their plan or their program and they think of how to get to A to B and they think, okay, I gotta go from here where I'm starting to that end goal, but you have to break it down into tiny steps. And that's what programming is. Right. So instead of A to B, more like A to Z. So you break it down instead of your goal is gonna take you a year to accomplish, for instance. Let's say you wanna lose 30 pounds, um, you wanna get stronger, that's a year goal. Don't worry guys, I'm not trying to lose but, 30 pounds. No. He's just speaking subjectively. No. Yeah, yeah, and so you have to break it down instead of a year, month to month, and then week to week. And that's the whole concept of programming or periodization is coming up with a system that will be the most efficient way towards reaching your goals. And so for beginners, if you're regaining strength, just progressive overload, so trying to get stronger week to week. Right. But if you're detrained, your baseline's a lot lower. So you're right. gonna regain that strength pretty rapidly. Which means you could be lifting more weight week to week before you have to really think about it. And that's what we've been doing with you. Your first several weeks we start low. I so think I started with ninety five pounds squatting. Yeah. And we've worked up to one thirty five. Yes, I think what a lot of people have to understand is that consistency, it's not your effort in any single session. In fact, uh, the option between giving a 10 out of 10 effort for four weeks versus giving, quite frankly, a seven out of 10 effort for a year, you have a lot better results. Right. So it's about consistent, intelligent effort and you can accomplish your goals. I think the vast majority of people, as long as they're not influenced by social media or some of the illusions on social media, some of the physiques that either one, uh, they could be enhanced or two, there could be some Photoshop involved, all, all those things. I think a lot of people out there can accomplish their goals. It's just about setting up that framework to achieve it. So for myself, since I do in a lot of ways feel like I'm starting from scratch, yeah. when I look at my body, obviously I'm like, okay, I want to lose fat, I want to build muscle again, but I also want to be lifting heavy weights, I want to be getting stronger. So there's always been that battle of if you want to lose fat, you need to be in a calorie deficit. But mm -hmm. if you want to gain muscle, you need to be in a surplus. Yeah. So for me, just starting out, what is your recommendation when it comes to nutrition and cardio and all of that? In the first place, if you are a complete beginner, you can build muscle and lose fat at the same time. I think you have to prioritize your goals and that's everyone out there. Then you have to figure out what do you want to move first? I think for most people, if you do have body image issues, it's easier as long as you're not a certain body fat percentage where you're uncomfortable with yourself. Mm -hmm. And it would be quite easy. Let, let's just, I'm making this up. But let's say you're 25 pounds over your goal weight. So you have a certain amount of weight you want to lose. Then it might make sense to do an eight to 10 week fat loss phase initially, just to lose some of that, not all, all of it. You'll lose it in a reasonable manner. And then you start your lean mass phase. However, for most people out there, to develop the concept of the long game, I actually like to put them on the lean mass phase first, oh, where they'll really? try and build. So for you, for instance, uh, right now, you are slowly going to be trimming down, but that's also because even though you took a year off, you have a certain level of muscle that you built up previously. Right, but you're basically saying, you know, if I just lost the weight without training, the muscle wouldn't show. But because I'm doing that, it's sort of gonna balance out the way that it would for a new person in the gym. Muscle from a metabolic standpoint is quite costly. Your body doesn't wanna hold on to it. So when you begin reducing calories, your body's trying to figure out where to get that excess energy it needs. So okay. fat is essentially stored energy, right? right? Uh, muscle mass, on the other hand, once again, is costly. When your body is in that starvation mode or when it's just, it needs to find an extra source of energy, it will both use your fat and as well as catabolizing your muscle. So strength training gives your body a really important reason to maintain that muscle mass because okay. you're providing a stimulus to keep that muscle. Because your body's not thinking like, hey, you wanna look good, I'm gonna help you reach those right, goals. Right, right, right. Instead, what it's thinking uh, in its head is survival. Yeah. And so you giving that stimulus, the reason to keep the muscle, that's why. And even when we take a look at the amount of caloric expenditure, and that's why for you, we do have you do some cardiovascular activity of exercise training, it's not that much. You're probably burning per session about 200 calories which does add up, which does add up, probably for you more closer to 100. But uh, you know, four times a week, that's four to 800 calories. Oh, true, yeah. You need to be for you uh, to lose a pound a week, about 3,500 calories below maintenance. That's not that much. That's a quarter of a pound maybe from just weight training. Right. The rest comes from reducing calories, increasing your uh, needs. So basically what you do outside of the gym, walking, moving around more, walking your dogs, and then also doing a little bit of cardio. So a little bit of uh, controlled activity. Like low intensity steady state or hit? I think people get caught up and I remember this one time I was working with a client and he wanted to lose a certain amount of weight and he was asking me that question about low intensity, a steady state versus high intensity <laughs> interval training. Mm -hmm. I'm like, my dude, at the stage that you're at right now, we want to focus on the calories. We want to focus on just your food habits. We want to focus on being overall more active and then whatever cardio you want. Okay. And some people, once again, they think cardio in their head, but something I advise for a lot of people and I think it works even better is joining just a team or doing some sort of activity they enjoy. So right. if you like swimming, if you like playing soccer, volleyball, it doesn't, it doesn't matter the sport itself, but basically being active. So, right, because if yeah. you just go and 
you know, play soccer or go swimming for a half hour every other day or something, yeah. that's already fulfilling yeah. that cardio that you would have done elsewhere. Yes. Definitely. Building off of that then, for my specific goals, how often should I be doing cardio? Because I know you said four to five times a week, but it's like... Training four to five times oh, a week. Oh, training four yeah. to five times a week and then cardio... Maybe two to three. It's up, uh, dependent upon the individual. Normally we have you do it after the sessions, right? For the 10 after leg minutes. days. And yeah. that's why I was going to ask, what is the benefit of doing them um, on... Because I feel like everyone always says that go do your head or go do your cardio directly after you just squat and heavy or whatever it is. Yeah, so once again, I don't think there's any magic secret why you're oh, doing okay. it after your lower body training. I think for some people, the next day, there's gonna be a certain amount of DOMS. You might feel just right. a little bit lazier. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. it is good to move around after that. So 24 to 48 hours after doing a lower body day, a leg day, you'll probably be sore in all that area. Mm -hmm. So moving around, once again, is a good idea. I just like putting it at the end of a intense session because for me, if the cardio, once again, is not intense, it's an idea to collect your thoughts after that workout. So, you know, you just did all that work. You did an hour and a half yeah. of training. You're really focusing. And now you're just resetting your brain for the outside world. Totally. Yeah, so it's okay. more mindset than anything else, I'd say, why I like it. So going back to nutrition then, for people who don't want to track, because obviously tracking macros is not common anymore. I feel before two years ago, that was all anyone did was they weighed everything that they they ate and they tracked every single thing in my fitness pal and there are still some people who do that but I would say a lot more people are going towards intuitive eating such as myself yeah so after doing it for so long you know okay this probably has about 30 grams of carbs this probably has this much fat but it can also be hard to to estimate those types of things so how do people kind of balance because you don't track anything that you eat no so how do you go about and I'm 30% body fat so there you go so maybe we shouldn't be taking your advice. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, but this when you are, one sample size when, is terrible. When you are lean, what what yeah. are some things that you do to make sure that you're not over consuming? Yeah, there's someone, Eric Helms, he's a fantastic mm -hmm. coach. I recommend for anyone out there. He has the muscle strength pyramids, they're called. They're both for uh, males and females. I'll have them linked in the description box. Yeah, he's fantastic. I'm not affiliated, but he is an extremely knowledgeable coach. And one of the ideas behind it, you can track if that's your prerogative, what you want to do, it's your right to do so. I think most people, when they get into strength training or lifting overall, should track for a month. Just have a rough idea what your calories are, what your maintenance is. I think you should have some experience tracking your calories, but it should not be this thing that you're shackled by then. So you, you need to understand, like I'll give you an example, someone that I worked with years ago, trying to estimate just the food they're consuming and all uh, those things. And I gave a rough number that he should be eating and he was convinced he was eating only about 2000 calories. He said he had two slices of pizza and when he tracked it, he was trying to track things himself and figure it out. Yeah. And he wrote that each uh, slice of pizza was about 200 calories, so it's 400 calories in total. That's closer to 1,200 calories. He was off by oh 800 calories. So if you have no idea how many calories are in an apple, which is probably like 80 uh, calories, uh, a banana, eggs, just what you eat in a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. and you have no framework, then I do think just figuring out for yourself tracking is a very good idea temporarily. And then intuitive eating is based off of that. Uh, speaking, right, it's based off uh, yeah. of those dietary yeah. habits. Some people say, like, I just eat when I feel hungry. I'm like, hunger hormones, the way that they work, sometimes they can be deviant where when you feel hungry, you actually have already eaten enough for the day. And for other people, such as myself, I'm not actually hungry very often. And if I just listen to my hunger, eat when I was hungry, I'd probably be 140 pounds. I think for a lot of influencers you see out there, they're now talking about intuitive eating. They have to keep in mind that they've had experience with tracking, mm -hmm. so they know that side. They know their body very well. They've been training for years and years on end. So they know what they need to eat roughly in a day to maintain their weight. They need to know how much to reduce their calories by roughly once again to lose weight. If you're someone where you just have no idea and you're this is your first time trying to lose weight, you need that framework. Right. When it comes to fasting, you know, yeah. like 16 oh, hour intermittent fast. fasting. Yeah, yeah, intermittent fasting. I find that for myself, I wake up with no appetite, whatever. I don't typically end up eating till about two o'clock. But then what ends up happening is my day gets stretched out and I get hungry then again around 10 o'clock. Is there, is it true that there is a stigma or something wrong with eating past a certain time? Yeah. Uh, digestively. Again, I think it really depends upon the individual. I would say the hierarchy of importance, and so that's why I referenced uh, that guy, Eric Helms, where he talks about the pyramid, right. the nutrition pyramid, what you should be focused on. It's all about calories first, then it uh, goes macronutrients, micronutrients. Meal meal timing after that is in, in terms of what's relevant. For an individual that really wants to get lean, we could maybe start exploring those options, but I think about what's applicable for I individuals out there. I think intermittent fasting, so if you fast for 16 hours and then you have an eight hour window or 20 hours of fasting, we have a four hour eating window. It depends upon the person once again. Some people when they're in a fat loss phase or they're trying to lose weight, it helps quench kind of that hunger where they're able then to suppress it 
after about eight to 10 hours, they stop feeling hungry and they're able to go on with their day. And then after when they break their fast and they have eight hours now to eat 1800 calories, it right. feels like so much more. Yeah, you know? right. If you're eating six meals of 300 calories, it might feel that you're having quite a small amount of food at every single opportunity. Yeah. If you're eating once or twice in the day, so you're eating after the fast, you're like, oh my God, I have all this food. So it depends upon how you react and what works for you. And I think compliance is the most important thing. The dietary style that allows you to adhere to your program is most important. And that's why flexible dieting became so popular because once again, there was that stigma that you had to eat tilapia, yeah. brown rice and broccoli. Asparagus. Order. Yeah, people should focus. And then there was that, the pendulum kind of swung in the other direction where people were like, look how many pop tarts I could fit in. And I'm then like, it became. Yeah. I'm like, your shit's green. <laughs> your guts are rotting on the inside. Um, I don't know if I have any other questions. I'll get the fuck out of here then. <laughs> I, I appreciate you having me on. <laughs> that was like, you're just saying like, get out of here. Get go. That is going to be it for this specific video. We do have a second one that's going to be coming out all about fat loss. I basically posted on Instagram and I said, I'm with this guy. Ask us some questions. We're going to be doing that, but I really look forward to you guys going back on this fitness journey with me again, obviously with Omar as the coach from here on out. If you guys have any questions, just bombard him with messages. Just, just fill his DMs nah, with questions. He loves the, that. Probably just in the comment section of this video would be best. No, like, probably just directly I'm, to you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll yeah. also make sure to leave his phone number linked in the description box. That way you guys can personally reach out to him that way too. <laughs> okay guys, seriously, that is going to be it. Obviously make sure to go check out Omar's channel. I will have it all linked in the description box, his Instagram, YouTube, phone number, email, home address, and make sure to subscribe to my channel too. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye. Uh, uh, uh.